coach App State. Just talk about the matchup with them and you know how. We'll, we'll yeah, uh, up you know tomorrow. we we got our hands full uh, tomorrow night. Uh, App State is uh, a team that can really score. Have some older guys been around for a while. They had a huge win Saturday against against Davidson and uh, did a really good job in that game of controlling the, the flow of the game, the tempo of the game for for 40 minutes. So you know, once again. Uh, it's the schedule we play. It's another tough team, uh, but we're excited to get back out in the court. And, uh, you know, I, I think we're getting better and we're improving, but uh, we're going to have our hands full with App State. And, but that's that's why you play the games. Um, now that you're going to have some time to kind of digest it, what are the kind of the biggest things you've, uh, you know, taken away from the film from the three games of the battle? Well, I mean, we're close, but close doesn't get you where you want to go. So we got to, you know, we're, we're improving and we're getting better. And now we got to finish games and find ways to win which is the hardest thing to do. Uh, guys' roles have changed from uh, when we got here, to, to, uh, and we've we got to make sure uh, understanding and knowing your role, Wayne, that we, we do a good job of uh, uh, finishing that role throughout the 40-minute game. And, uh, you know, for example, uh, we're putting so much on, on Johnny, Malik, DJ, those guys, uh, we got to make, and Justin, we got to make sure that you know they're falling through with the, what we want to do late in the game and so forth and that we just got to get better at it. So, you know, a really good schedule brings that stuff to light very quickly, and it has, where uh, everybody sees how much we're improving, but we still got to find a way to get results. Does your defense take longer to master than maybe your offense for the younger kids? And it, what's your is there a level of concern with your defensive well, uh, result transition? Yeah. You know. I, Honestly, our half-court defense has improved uh, a tenfold, and we're, we are getting stops in the half-court. Our defensive transition has to improve. That I mean, that's the red flag right now for us is is getting back, fixing our defense, and keeping teams from getting a transition three or a transition layup. Uh, you know, that's hard. I, I've always said this. You've heard me say this before. One of the hardest things to do in college basketball, especially playing against teams with with pace is defensive transition. And uh, part of it is newer guys, part of it is understanding what to do, but that's probably the biggest part of our defense is defensive transition. Uh, we're getting better de guarding the three point, uh, the three, you know, threes on, on the perimeter, we're better and better at that. And that has really helped us, but we gotta get, we, we gotta continue to improve in, in, in transition, defensive transition. Some of that's experience, some of that is demanding better talk and just doing it over and over again. The guys are getting sick and tired of doing it, but we're going to keep doing it until we get good at it. Will your transition defense get a test tomorrow night because we're told App likes to run? Yeah, right. absolutely. They, they love high possession games. They push it. They shoot the three. They, they shoot like 38% from the three as a team. So, yeah, it, it seems like uh, – what we're uh, what we need to get better at, and what we're not very good at right now, is what everybody we're everybody we're playing is really good at. So it, it, we got to it's got to break sooner or later, and we got to get good in defensive transition and getting back. And and you know the the one thing about the trip, uh, our press helped us. We didn't create as many turnovers as a, as we wanted, but we sped p teams up, and and we call them shooting turnovers. They don't show show up on the box scores turnovers, but shooting turnovers. Uh, the teams we played, we created a bunch of those, and we got the rebounds, and, and we were able to run off of them. We got to get more of them and some turnovers, but we got to get back and fix our defense when we go from the press or defense or transition in the half court defense. We got to fix it quicker and be able to to uh, keep keep teams from scoring against us in that in that area of the game. I'm sure you guys aren't lacking in confidence, but the fact that you've played four Power Five schools, we're in all of those games, one one of them. I mean, is that can that have a lasting impact kind of as we as we go forward here? You guys yeah, I mean the guys know we we played really good teams. We, heck, we just were in the Maui Invitational, and and uh, you know, we, we, but we we we, we want to win games. I, I've never been one we're close. So you know, pat guys on the back for being close. That's that's not who we are, and that's what my teams have never been like that. Find a way to win. Find a way to win, uh, guys. We're in a good place because I like I like we know we have to get better. And that, that, I think, is the, the, the key when you play a really tough schedule early in the year, no matter what the result is. You can't be satisfied just because it's a win. You can't be, uh, well, we're close because if it's a loss. It, it's got to be, we got to get better. We got to get better than we, that, that Michigan game, we played pretty well, had a chance to win it. We didn't finish the game the way we need to. We got to get better from it. 
the Marquette game, the things we emphasized in the game, uh, we we did a decent job of it. But late in the game, when you're not rebounding and securing rebounds, you give guys other opportunities, shoot yourself in the foot. Like we got to get better from that all the time, and and uh, we will. Uh, Sometimes it happens overnight. Sometimes it takes a while. That's the process. You've heard me say that before. But we we got to get better, no matter who we play. From what the last game out, the last practice out, we got to keep getting better. We are getting better, but we want to do it at a pace where it helps us win the next game. The transition D is that what you is that the reason for the three point that all the three pointers you're giving up, or is that also half court, or is three point defense kind of its own thing, whether it's half court or full court? If you uh, you know if you look at the stats, we go back and watch the tape. We're, I think in transition we're giving up a lot of open threes, and uh, teams are making them on us. Um, so we just get, we, you know we just that's just the stats. That's just the facts on on tape. We got to get better at it. It's got to become more of a higher priority. It, it is it is of urgency to us. Uh, but the flow of the game, I mean, you're going to give up a couple open threes. You got to run them down though and make them as tough tough as shots as possible. I didn't think we were very good at that. We're getting better at it. Uh, but to to win these games that we've played, we we got to make sure we're defending the three point line much better. And that's just it seems to be the common thread: North Florida and Virginia and, and Michigan and Marquette, especially. They're just going to jack them up. And I, but I wonder, like, th- that's not well, good that's not teams. something that's part of your defense. You you're, you need it's something you need to improve on. That's right. You're not you're not just trying to give teams a three, I guess. No, no, absolutely. I mean, you're. Uh, Good, good shooting teams are going to shoot more threes, and they sh- they spread you out and stretch you, or they shoot transition threes like we do, and so we gotta we gotta defend that better. There's there's no excuse. There's no you know no, no short changing it. We gotta run guys off the three, and we can't give up threes to their better shooters, which at times we have done that. And part of it is when you're scrambling out of the press or you're scrambling out of a breakdown of of your defense, you gotta find ways to run those guys off, and we haven't done that at a high enough level. And it's, it's hurt us. Coach, uh, Rashawn Shabazz is kind of a top guy scoring wise. What's kind of key to keeping him at bay? Yeah. Well, he's gonna, you know, he, he's gonna score some points, and he's gonna take a lot of shots. We gotta, gotta make sure he's a low percentage shooter tomorrow night. Uh, just make it as hard as possible uh, on him. Uh, not, not let him just get, get off early in the game. We gotta do a really good job of him and making it really tough off, uh, you know, off in transition as well as in half court, without a doubt. I think you've had a game like this yet, but um, with your defense, have you come up to a case where you have to choose between defending the post a little more, defending the perimeter a little more, and getting caught in between those two? I don't think you've had a game like that yet, but no. I mean, uh, that's the one thing that I I won't do is is I I want I don't want to give our guys too much, so now their minds filled with the noise. I, I want to. We got to be more specific uh, with our guys because I think we play better with a clear mind. We play better knowing the specific game plan or, or, or keeping it as simple as possible. When when we're flying around and we're really aggressive, that's when we're at our best. When we're flat-footed because we're not sure what to do, that 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 hurts us. Um, you know, in the, late in the game against North Florida, we made some plays because we just flew around and, and we were who we were. I thought the Cal game, we were much more aggressive. I thought parts of the Michigan game where we were flying around, especially in the defensive end and making it really hard for them, that put us in a, in a, in a, in a greater advantage to, to be successful to win the game. So, you know, I think that's the big part of our, our approach on our coaching staff with our guys is sometimes less is better and uh, allow our guys to fly around, allow our guys uh, to have the, the instinct of, of on the defensive end of, of getting after guys and running guys off the three. We just got to get better at it. I mean, there's no, uh, you know, there, there's no other way to say it. Is we just got to keep working on it and keep improving. Anybody open up your eyes in particular in Hawaii, a guy who could keep it going for three days in a row against you know three three really good teams. Well, I thought uh, you know I thought Mikel Sims gave us great minutes, great toughness, uh, made some shots, of course, but. I just he's getting better and better. He's just getting more confident. He's still a young, a young pup, man. He's only a sophomore in his first year here, so he's getting better. Uh, you know, I thought Mc, uh, Malik Crowfield gave us three really good games on both ends of the floor. I like the energy off the bench. We used our bench more uh, on this trip, and I think that really helped us. 
uh, and we're going to continue to do that. We got to play some more, some give some of these guys off the bench more minutes, and we're, we're, we we plan on doing that. I think we could play at a higher level and play faster, which is to our advantage. Uh, getting some of these young guys in earlier in the game. I'm sure you prepare to the utmost for every opponent that you have, but I kind of wonder if when when the team you're about to play just beats somebody that you're going to see in the conference schedule, does it make you perk up a little bit more? Yeah, well, you know, when when you tell when you talk to the team yesterday, the first thing we said is here's what they did to Davidson, who uh, is picked preseason ahead of you on some of the polls, and and uh, everybody knows how good of a t program Davidson is, and these guys took it to him. So we we yeah that. that Definitely grabs the attention of your team and so forth. And our guys know everybody we have on our schedule is a, a good team. And just because they're from a s smaller league, that doesn't matter. There's really good players everywhere. And you know nowadays too, I probably have said this before, but uh, nobody fears anybody because these kids have been playing against each other since they're eight, nine years old in AU all over the country. So you know App State's not going to fear VCU, and and the, their players have played against all different types of level of players so they're they're not going to be afraid of our players so you got to respect your opponent and you got to prepare the best you can to be ready to be ready to go win how's the Isaac Van going to start to happen tomorrow no uh he has a high ankle sprain so it's it's going to take some time we're just going to have you know it's our our trainer Eddie Binion has done a great job with him you know IV's been living in the training room trying to get right so he's moving around more and all that stuff but you know, as bad as we want him, it's a long season, and we got to make sure uh, other guys step up. Um, you know, unfortunately for him, he's not going to go, but other guys are going to get an opportunity and to, to impact the game, and uh, they got to be ready to go. No, I'm not good at that stuff. I I I'll t I have no problem to say as a coach, I'm terrible with injuries. Um, so I think everybody should play an hour later, uh, but it just. Uh, I, you know, it's one of these things you got to listen, listen to IV, listen to the trainers and the doctors. We have great support staff for that. Um, it, my biggest thing is, is you you rehab and work as hard as you can to get back as quick as you can, uh, but not making a long term injury. Uh, because if I if this is a long term injury for IV, we're cheating him and cheating our team because we're never going to get him at his best. So we got to make sure we we do a good job of getting him close to his best and then and then that that thing goes away so it's part of it's everyone's dealing with it unfortunately we've dealt with a few of them here early IV being a, a big one but we just we got to do what we got to do I know you said you didn't you didn't make the schedule but you're going to play it and yep. uh you know, although it's been somewhat difficult you know Virginia going to Hawaii it seems like you have a lot of home games so uh you've got App State and ODU uh, at home and then and then Texas at home so has it been nice, I guess, to to play a lot of home games and, and not a lot of true road games? Yeah, I mean, I, that, you know, everywhere I've been, we've played a ton of road, true road games, so we don't have as many of them here at VCU, especially ex until we get in our league, of course. But we just uh, – you got to play the game, whatever is the next game, wherever it's at. Uh, when they're home, they're awesome because of, of our crowd. Uh, you know, tomorrow I want our crowd to give us unbelievable energy tomorrow and, and keep going into the season like that. But uh, it's uh, – it's good to have home games because you don't have to be on the road. You, you can pre prepare here. Our guys are sleeping in their own beds. There's familiarity. That that thing as a coach, as a coach and a coaching staff, you like. Um, but you know, when the ball goes up, you got to be ready to play. And and uh, we've we've been improving. We now we, we want to get results. We got to find ways to win games. And you know, nobody said it was going to be easy. And and uh, you know, what I love about our team is the approach we we've, we've been having. Um, they're disappointed, but they know there's more in them, and we got to get better. And we're close, but close doesn't count until you get over over the hump. Uh, and so our guys are hungry to do that. Our coaching staff's hungry to do that. And and sometimes it's the hard way, uh, but it's the way. And, and we're going to take that approach. Seton Hall is your only true road game, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Yes, sir. Do you feel like you really have to take advantage of, of all these home games, considering what the atmosphere is like? Here versus what it will be like when you go on the road. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, look, when you're playing at VCU, it's a huge advantage to be at home with the crowd we have and the and the band and the students and and all the crazies. That that's that's what you want. Um, that that's why you come here. That's that's why it's exciting when you walk out uh, for warm ups, run out for warm ups, and you see everybody as excited as you are about the game. So you know we're going to need Ram Nation to be fired up for us tomorrow and. 
and and help us win because we put it on them as well to help us win and that's the fun of it. Uh, now you're almost uh, halfway through the non-conference play, so is there anything you kind of put up on the board and say we have to get better at this for the style of team we'll see in a team play? Well, we got to get better at defense. Uh, we got to get better at defense for sure. Um, we got to get better um, late game execution. You know, you know that that's that's another one where that takes time, and you got to go through a lot of late game situations to get better and better. Uh, I thought we shot or shot ourselves in the foot against Michigan, but we got to learn from it uh, because we got to get better in late game situations. But we will, and that's practicing it every day as well as as uh, knowing time, score, and situation. But uh, I think if our our defense is improving, our transition defense has to really improve. You know, that to me is the utmost of of importance to us. But if we get as we continue to get better at that, we're gonna get better as well. True or false, you went into the ocean at some point in Maui. True. I jumped off the cliff too. On purpose? <laughs> there was water down there. Uh, you weren't pushed is what I'm saying. No, the last day I went I, I jumped the last day before we flew out Thanksgiving Thursday. I uh, got in the water for about an hour and a half, and we swam out to the one cliff that was about 30 feet high and jumped off with my son and a couple of coaches. No so, players. No, I don't know if any of the players did it. Uh, I don't think. To. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's it's safe. Everybody was doing it. Uh, I'm just, I, a couple of guys I, I, I saw firsthand, they don't know how to ride waves. So we're going to have to take them down to Virginia Beach, teach them how to ride some waves, some of them made some sand for sure. Uh, but it was, an, it was an awesome experience. You know, of course, you go out there because you want to win games. And, um, you know, there's, we, we had a chance to be 2-1 and one realistically, but we didn't. And that, you know, we got to learn from that. And, and, but I will say uh, what an unbelievable experience for our guys, for our staff. It was it was awesome to see how many VCU fans were out there. We might have had the most fans of all the teams, uh, but not just not just because there were so many people out there, but how they acted, how they were so into uh, the experience. They were unbelievable in the games. I mean, they, you should be very proud of VCU and, and, and how we represented ourselves, but how our fans represented ourselves. I mean, it was, it was awesome. It was really, really cool. And, you know, when you're walking around the, the hotel, the resort, and you see all these VCU fans high-fiving the players and stopping to talk to the players and coaches' families and all that stuff, it was really special. It was really neat, and it was a lot of fun. Not to get into the matchup, but ODU on Saturday. You just talking, you know, you here for some of the heydays of that rivalry. What was that rivalry meant? What was some of the atmosphere of that Yeah, game? pretty, I mean, awesome rivalry. Pretty uh, games down to the wire. Uh, you know, it's 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 a fight. It's a 40-minute fight, it's, and and uh, you know I have great respect for Coach Jones. He's a heck of a coach. Of course, the last three years, uh, Rice and Old Dominion in the conference in Conference USA had had some great games. Um, so very familiar with their program. But the VC Old Dominion rivalry has been going on for a long, long time, and and uh, it's it's really cool. There's been a lot of great basketball games between the, both the universities. Yeah, if you're in this game long enough, you uh, have somebody on your team that makes one of those, but you also have somebody on the other team that makes one against you. So every time I see shots like that, we've all been there. Uh, it's, it's, it's why you play the game all the way to the horn. It's just how it goes. So it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty crazy. Uh, Coach, uh, with App State, do you uh, what do you kind of pull from the Davidson game the way they kind of limit them? You know, offense. I've used this course a lot. Limited, you know, yeah, you know, I, I think they have great size and athleticism. Uh, they really disrupted their offense and the flow of the Davidson's offense. Uh, I thought they really rebounded well, like limiting the one and done. Uh, but I also, I, I think it was the efficiency of App State's offense. Uh, they, they scored around the basket. They made shots. Uh, when they were in one-on-one -on -one isolation situations, they did a really good job of, of making shots and drawing fouls. They got out in the transition. Um, but then, uh, you know, even late in the game, they were just playing with great confidence that they really, really sort of stymied Davidson's offense, which not many teams do that, that's for sure. All right, guys.